friends and family, Mount Carmel community. Help me welcome the Mount Carmel Choir.
Good morning, Mount Carmel, friends and family. It's time to worship. We're glad that you have joined us today. We have an exciting worship service for you today. And I'm praying right now that you are prepared to receive what God has in store for you. I'm glad that you have chosen Mount Carmel to worship with this morning. Word of God says, I was glad when they said unto me, come, let us go into the house of the Lord. We're also offering in-house worship at the hours of 8 and 1045. You can register online for that if you would like to join us in person. But however you feel, I want you to know that whatever, wherever you are and whatever condition you're in, God is able. He's able to meet you where you are and to provide for you what you need. So with that in mind, as we began to worship, let us go to God in prayer. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to worship. And now, God, we come praying that everything that's done here will be glorifying and edifying to your name, God. We pray that we will worship you with our whole heart. God, that we will remember the things that you've done for us, God, and that we take time to thank you for those things. God, that we would remember how you've made a way out of no way, God, and we would thank you for those times. God, for those things that you've done, God, that we didn't even know were about to happen to us, but yet and still, you built a hedge of protection around us and you saw us through. We thank you, God. God, I'm praying for the preacher who will come today and bring your word. We pray for power. We pray for all that you have placed in us to be able, God, to proclaim your word through our personal experiences so that someone may hear and be saved. God bless this time of sharing. It is in the matchless name of Jesus the Christ we offer this prayer. And the church said, amen, amen, amen. The scripture, as I said, is going to come today from Ecclesiastes. And we're going to read chapter 5, verses 18 through 20. Verses 18 through 20. And the word of God reads as thus. <clears throat> this is what I have seen to be good. It is fitting to eat and drink and find enjoyment in all the toil of which one toils under the sun the few days of life God gives us. For this is our lot. Likewise, all to whom God gives wealth and possessions and whom he enables to enjoy them and to accept their lot and find enjoyment in their toil. This is the gift of God. For they were scarcely brought over the days of their lives because God keeps them occupied with the joy of their heart. God keeps them occupied with the joy of, the, of their hearts. May the Lord add a blessing to his already blessed word as we receive it. Mount Carmel, it's time to welcome our first-time visitors. If this is your first time worshiping with us, would you please take the time to put a one in the chat? If this is your first time worshiping, place a one in the chat so that our members, family, and friends can welcome you to our service. It's great to have you join us, and we pray that you will join us not only online, but as time goes on and you feel comfortable, that you will come in here and join us in person. We'd love to see your face. Mount Carmel has been great, and now it is time for us to 
bless the Lord with what he has blessed us with. It's time for us to take an offering so that the kingdom of God can continue to flourish and serve even in times like this. There are several different ways you can choose to give here at Mount Carmel. You can give by the app Givelify through Mount Carmel Baptist Church. You can also go online at mcbaptist.org and you can give online. If you choose to, you can mail it by mailing it to 7237 Tucker C.G. Road here in Charlotte, North Carolina. Or if you would like to come by the campus to drive by and drop it off yourself, you can do that. And if you want to drop it off, let's use the days from Monday through Thursday from the hours of 9 to 2. And on Wednesday, we have extended hours from the hours of 3 to 5.30. So if you want to come by and drop them into the box, which is located in the mall way, please feel free to do that. And now with that offering in your hand, would you please pray with me? God, we thank you for these gifts that you have given unto us. And now, God, we take time to give back to you, to give back to the church, to give back to the purpose of your kingdom. And God, we pray that as we give these gifts to the church, that they will be used in the way that you have prescribed them to be used here in our communities, God. We pray that needs are met, not only just here in the church, God, but outside of these four walls, God, that we meet the needs of these people. God, we're praying that you will continue to bless Mount Carmel so that we may be a blessing to all who serve you, God. We pray for the direction, the insight, and we pray for, God, the, the spirit that takes us to the people who need us the most. So with these gifts, God, that we give back to you, I also pray, God, that you will bless the giver, the one who gives because they know it's the right thing to do, God, the one who gives because they're giving out of need and in turn are looking for a blessing, as well as the one who gives because they've been blessed so much. Whatever reason they give and wherever they stand on that pendulum, God, we pray that you will bless them all. For giving is an act of love that you have given to us and now we take the time to give back. So God bless us now as we give these gifts to you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. And now it's worship time. We have a great music department here, music ministry. And at this time, they're going to take us a little bit higher. They're going to put us in the worship experience. So to get in that worship experience, I ask that you would Ready your space for worship. I ask that you will stand up, that you will lift your hands. Whatever you need to do to draw in the presence of God, this is the time to do it as our mu music ministry blesses us. Bless you, Mount Carmel. i 
Again, we'd like to thank you for joining us in worship this morning. I thank God for the music ministry for doing an excellent job and bringing us into the presence of God. Um, I know this is the fifth Sunday, so this is a family Sunday. So I pray that you gather your family around and be able to come and worship on an online worship experience. 
First of all, I want to just to think, take this time to thank our pastor again for giving us the opportunity just to minister to you on this morning. I want you to do me a favor. You know what we do. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to uh, give some uh, appreciation, thumbs up or hand clap or even just a thank you or appreciation to our illustrious pastor, uh, Pastor Kimbrell and uh, Lady Kimbrell on their absence. We want you to just give them some appreciation and thank you. We just thank and we love you. Thank you, Pastor Kimbrough, for this opportunity. Again, we're, I'm going to talk about something I believe today that everyone will be able to kind of grab hold to and be able to kind of comprehend. You know, at the, the pandemic has taken a whole toll on us all, and we've all been away. We've been kind of some anxiety and some angst and kind of just being um, kind of worried about certain things or where this even pandem pandemic is going at this time. Um, even um, during the pandemic, uh, some of us was kind of stressed out and didn't have some time to do some things that we wanted to do. But some, some of us are just stressing out with the worries of this life and the worries of what's going on in the entire world. Um, so as we get, we're getting ready to get past this pandemic, as things begin to open up and we get back into the nitty and gritty, we're getting back to the swing of things. I want us to take some time, and I'm going to talk about it today. I want us to take some time to have some fun. Have some fun. That's, that's what I'm going to talk about today, is have some fun. Would you pray with me as I go to God? We ask God's presence and his anointing as we minister this word to you on this morning. Father God, we thank you, God, for allowing us to minister. For that, God, we give you praise, honor, and glory. Father God, we pray now in the name of Jesus that you just come into this place, come into this tabernacle. God, I decrease, you increase. God, I pray, God, that you will use me as an instrument for your glory on this morning. God, come into my mouth, speak the word, speak your words. God, come and give me the anointing that makes preaching and ministering easy. Holy Spirit, use me in the way that you want to be, to be used. We'll be careful to give your name, honor, and glory. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Ecclesiastics is a part of the wisdom literature. We are going to be taught uh, 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 a, a simple principle, but it could be kind of difficult, but it's a Simple principle is going to sound trite, but it's important. It's a spiritual truth. This is called have some fun. Have some fun. I want to talk to you this morning about this simple truth entitled my sermon topic. If you if you if you write in notes or if you put it on a chat for me, uh, have some fun, have some fun. I read an article recently, and it says, having fun must be taken seriously. This, this is a psychological phenomenon called recreational deprivacy. Deprivacy. It, it, it's, it's, it's linked up to deprivation. I'm sorry. It's recreational deprivation. It's linked up to criminality, obesity, and declining creativity. Play is important. <clears throat> One writer describes play as a banquet for the brain, a smorgasbord for the senses. It provides nourishment for the body and spirit. And yet our society seems to be starving us from true recreation. Biologists and sociologists says that play is a, board, is a broad term, but can be defined as not doing work. Y'all get it? Play is a broad term, but it can be defined as not doing work. On the chat, just put that down. It says play is not doing work. It is it is self-chosen, self-directed. It is imaginative, not literal activity. Someone has said it means that 
has more value than its end. My wife quoted Albert Einstein the other day as she was on online on one of her things that she was doing. And it said, have some fun. He said that creativity is having fun. What psychologists, biologists has come up with their own concept, but it's not original to the world of science. It is given to us first in scripture. The book of e Ecclesiastes is a book that speaks about the vanity of life or the fatality of life or the uselessness of life and effort. If life is, vo is viewed from under the sun, that is to say without relationship with the divine one, without God, everything in life is useless and futile. The point of the book of Ecclesiastes is to prioritize or prioritize one's relationship with the creator. At the end of the book, Solomon says that you and I shall remember the creator before it's too late. Because working hard to gain possessions, because working hard to be important, because working hard to be significant, because working hard to have stuff and things all fades away because we all are going to the same sized grave. Within the larger context of the text, the writer, preacher, this is really what Ecclesiastic is, a sermon of series of sermons from Solomon to give us the antidote or the remedy to the sense of fatality in life. Here it is. Life is futile. Work is futile. Marriage, I love my wife, is futile. Raising children is futile. Getting a house is futile. Excelling in your career is futile. Unless at a certain point, you guessed it, you learn how to have some fun. That's the sermon this morning. That's the text this morning. Have some fun. Let's have some fun. Let's read the text. Listen carefully to the truth of this text. Ecclesiastes 5, 18 through 20. Behold, what I have seen to be good and fitting is to eat and drink and find enjoyment. And all the toll with which one tolls under the sun, the few days of his life that God has given to him, for this is his lot. Everyone also to whom God has given wealth and possessions and power to enjoy them and to accept this lot and rejoice in his toll, this is the gift of God. For he will not much remember the days of his life because God keeps him occupied with the joys of his heart. <clears throat> Enjoyment, fun, is an intentional investment that produces positive, spiritual, psychological, emotional dividends. Let's define that one more time. Enjoyment, fun, is, intentional, is an intentional investment that produces positive, spiritual, psychological, emotional dividends. Here is a simple thing you must learn today. Make fun a spiritual priority in your life. Here's what the preacher says. <clears throat> Difficulty is inherited with the responsibility due to the fallen nature of the world in which we live in. So because life is hard, fun is necessary. Let me say it again. So because life is hard, fun is necessary. Because we live in a fallen world, because we are flawed creatures, 
The things we must do to be responsible inherently involves difficulty. The writer calls it toil or work. <clears throat> it's a result of the fall of Adam and Eve in the garden. The promises of God was, I'm going to give you the ability to continue to work. But here is the penalty of your fallenness. By the sweat of your brow, will you eat bread? <clears throat> By the sweat of your brow, will you make a living? By the sweat of your brow, will you be able to make this month's rent? By the sweat of your brow, will you be able to pay your mortgage? By the sweat of your brow, you'll be able to get through school. You will make it, but you are going to sweat to do it. Here is what he says. I don't want you to be sweating always without understanding how to pause per periodically, to reset, <clears throat> to recharge, to, to sleep, time to sleep is necessary. Time away and go off away alone is necessary. But intentional, intentional recreation is also necessary for true spiritual, psychological, and emotional rest. Let me say that one more time. Intentional recreation is also necessary for true spiritual, psychological, emotional rest. Proverbs says this, a joyful, merry heart is good medicine. That's Proverbs 17, 22. First Timothy 6 and 17 says, as for the rich in this present age, charge them not to be haughty, nor to set their hopes on the uncertainty of the riches but on God who richly provides us with everything we need to enjoy. Why fun? Some of us don't know how to have fun. Why should we have fun? Because some of us, even here online, do not know how to have fun. We are cranky and, con and, you know, and contrite. Most of the time, my assignment today is to help you out. You fussy and snappy at folk, my assignment is for you also. Can I tell you why you should have some fun? Why should you make fun a priority and dissect some time? Because the things that we think are fun is really pseudo fun. It's work dressed up in fun clothes. Some of us think we're having fun, but we really are not. Let me run to the text. First of all, in order to have some fun, why should we have some fun? Is we need to have fun because it's the right and fitting thing to do. It's right there in the text. Listen to it. It's right there in the text. Verse 18, behold, what I have seen to be good and fitting is to eat and drink and find enjoyment. And all the toll with which one tolls under the sun a few days of his life that God has given him, for this is his lot. Why should, why should I be enjoying life, having some fun? It's because enjoying life is the right thing to do. <clears throat> it's appropriate, not because life is easy. I don't enjoy life because life is easy. I must intentionally learn how to enjoy life because life is so hard. If I'm waiting on life to be easy to enjoy it, I never will. I never will. The writer assumes that you are responsible, gainfully employed and doing work what is necessary to make a living. That's what the writer, he assumes that. He assumes that. That is the assumption of the text. The assumption of the text is that you are not lazy and trifling. 
That's the assumption. The assumption of the text is that you're not lazy and that you're not trifling. Because this sermon does not to apply to the lazy life. Proverbs says again, we should have to <clears throat> go back to the Proverbs and learn about Proverbs of the ant who works and gathers in the fall before the winter. That is for the lazy life. But for those who are diligent, who are dutiful, who are gainfully employed, you can't wait for life to get easy before you start enjoying it. <clears throat> My daddy would say, it's employment before enjoyment. You must work before you have some fun. Our generation has this totally backwards. We want the pleasure before progression. Note that the text says this. I'm still on the text. I'm on, eight, I'm on the 18th verse still. We should find enjoyment. Do you see it? Do you see it? Type in there. We should find, type, type in the chat. We should find enjoyment. Find literally could be translated as to see the good in it. We should see the good in enjoyment. The, the pessimistic mentality that, per, that precedes all of life, this thought of all of one's circumstances to be damaging or harmful, when you get to this, how high sense of nebulous of, of high nebulous of nirvana where you don't have no bills to pay. Everybody always liking you. You don't have to work anymore. That life that you are looking for to feel like you are enjoying life, my brothers and sisters, does not exist. In this life, you will have trials and tribulations. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of them all. Just having to get up and make, make a living is in fact a difficult and toilsome. You have to find enjoyment. That, it, that is what the text is saying. That's what the text is saying. This is what the model in creation, this is what was modeled in creation. Employment before enjoyment. There it is. I love the Bible. There it is, the world that is void, chaotic, without structure, and the Lord hires himself as a creator. He takes the substance of what has come out of his existence, out of his essence, calls order out of chaos. There it is. God says lights, there was lights. God said sky, then there was birds for the sky. God said land, and there was animals for the land. Six days of employment, then he spends the seventh day for enjoyment because the Bible says and it was good. I want to help somebody live today. You are not like God until you learn how to enjoy life. I'm trying to help you out. I'm trying to help, I'm trying to help you have some fun. I'm trying to help you have some fun. As we get back into everything, as everything starts to starting to open up and everything gets busy, I want you to learn to have some fun. You are not like God until you learn how to enjoy life. We need to, number one, we need to have some fun because it's the right and fitting thing to do. Secondly, we need to have some fun because enjoyment is a gift from God. Look, look, I'm right in the text. I'm not leaving the text. I'm right here in the text. Look at it. Verse 19. Everyone also to whom God has given wealth and possessions and power to enjoy them, to accept his lot and rejoice in his toll. This is the gift of God. All right. Ecclesiastes 5.19 states that God has given you a gift. These are not 
the same gifts. These are not these are not separate gifts for say. It is one gift it is one gift. This is the gift singular. This is one gift of God. The gift is provision, acceptance, enjoyment. Let me say that one more time. Here it is. Ecclesiastes 519 states that God has given you a gift. These are not separate gifts. It is one gift. The gift is provision, acceptance, and enjoyment. Provision. God has given you wealth and possession. Please don't misunderstand wealth as some westernized view that in order to have wealth, wealth, you must have mansions and Roy's voices and Michael Kors and Louis Vuitton to have what? Please don't mistake what, what the writer is saying here. Please don't mistake that. If you get a chance to pick with which pair of shoes you can wear today, you're wealthy. If you decide if you want to eat grits or oatmeal, you are wealthy. If you can decide if you want bacon or turkey, or turkey bacon, you are wealthy. If you can decide which way to wear your hair, you are wealthy. Here's what happens. The enemy has placed an image in our minds that makes us minimize and underappreciate and devalue the enormous wealth that we have been given by God. Amen. You are wealthy, but you don't act like it. You are wealthy if you have a roof over your head. You are wealthy if you got heat and air in your house. You are wealthy if you woke up to, to food and did not have to beg anyone for it. You got wealth. Won't you chat? Won't you put it in the chat? Won't you put that online and say, you got wealth. The second thing he says is acceptance. We do not have to get, we do not get to, to enjoyment without going through acceptance. Provision is given to accept one's lot. To accept, verse 19, to accept his lot and rejoice in his lot and rejoice in his toll. To understand that life is just life. Difficulty, why? This hyper Ideal, uh, this hyper um, idealism, I'm not telling you not to have faith for things to get better. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not telling you not to have faith for God to change a circumstance to work it out for you. That's not what I'm saying. To work it out for your good. I'm not saying you not to do that. What I am saying is this, no matter what God changes, he will never change you out of your difficulty. If he stops this difficulty, another is going to start because that is just life. That's just life, saints. If one difficulty is, 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 is stopped, then another difficulty is going to come. That's just life. Let me tell you something. If I had the time, if I had the time on this online worship experience, I would tell you something. I will tell you this. And you need the difficulty. You need to get, the, you need the difficulty. This pandemic, I'm not necessarily it was saying that it was needed, but because of, because of this difficulty in the pandemic, you would not have prayed without difficulty. Some of us would not even have come to church without difficulty. We would be headed in the wrong direction and path and would have stayed in the same place if it was not for difficulty. You need some difficulty to accept one's life, lot, to accept one's lot, to not cry, woe is me. We, we used to sing this song in chorus. Yes, soon the troubles of this world will soon be over. Yes, soon, but not yet. Yes, soon, not yet. You got two choices in life. You can either have a difficult life or you can die. That's two choices in life. You can have a difficult one or just die. The ability to 
except my lot in life is a part of the same gift, provision, acceptance, enjoyment, enjoyment, the enjoyment God has been given me for more than I deserve and the ability to accept my lot in life. He says, then God gives me the power to enjoy. Somebody type the power to enjoy. Something to have enjoyment with wealth and possession. The ability to be real of what life is then gives me the ability to enjoy. <laughs> I love God. Some of us have stuff to enjoy, but because we won't be real about our lives, we can't enjoy what God has given us to enjoy. God gives us currency of employment. We either spend that currency on pseudo enjoyment or sin, or we allow it to expire through non-use. Anything that you are obligated to, you are not going to enjoy it. So these social function you feel that you must show up in, or you must show up to, the fact that you must show up to the meeting, you got to show up at the birthday party, you must make your grand entrance, you must, you just got to hang out with those individuals or you just have to have it, you got, they can't do nothing without you. That's pseudo fun, that, that's, that's pseudo fun. God has given, God has not given you the currency of enjoyment for you to spend it on pseudo fun. Fun is doing what you want to do. Now I'm going, now I'm not going, to, I'm not saying that you can't live your whole life that way. Don't, don't misunderstand me. But sometimes in order to be healthy spiritually and psychologically, you must take a day or two days a week and just do what you want to do. Go somewhere out, go out, go out somewhere, go to the mall. Go to the movies, do something, go listen to some music. And then the music that you listen to doesn't have to be uh, turn it over to Jesus. It doesn't have to be by and by till the morning come. You can put on some jazz, put on something, have some fun, have some fun. Spend your currency the right way. Last thing, and I'm done. We need to have some fun because it's the right and fitting thing to do. That's the text. We need to have some fun because enjoyment is a gift from God. And number three is we need to have some fun because having fun and enjoyment prevents us from complaining. Y'all see that? Verse number two, verse 20, I'm sorry, verse 20, verse 20. For he will not as much remember the days of his life because God keeps him occupied with the joy in his heart. Ecclesiastes 5.20, it says this, a life that is not intentionally, is not intentional about healthy enjoyment will be filled with accidental mess. Your soul needs fun or your flesh will find mess. Y'all not getting it. Y'all type that down. Let me try one more time. Your soul needs fun or your flesh will find mess. Enjoy what you can while you can or your flesh will cry out and take control and you will be physically sinning while, you so, while your soul is deteriorating. Here's what the Lord wants you to do. The Lord wants you to to give you some business. The Lord wants to give you some business. It's in the text, it's in the text. God wants to give you something to do. He wants to occupy your mind, heart, and body to keep you from complaining and sinning. Hear this now, it's, it is an easy concept, work, work, as a gift of God, fun when you are not working so that your soul 
can recover, re-energize, recharge, renew from the work you must do to glorify God. Idle time not filled with God-honoring intentional fun will result in a complaining heart. <laughs> Let me say that one more time. Idle time not filled with God honoring intentional fun will result in a complaining heart. Have you ever noticed that people who have no business find ways to complain? <laughs> that word occupy is the term for business. Notice that the writer is extremely honest about the reality that, compl that complaints and poor disposition are part of our regular struggle. For he, verse 20, for he will not as much remember the days of his life because God keeps him occupied with joy in his heart. This is a, po this is a poetic reference to the concept of lamenting the past or fearing the future. It's the idea that you must live well in the present so that, so that regret won't overtake you about your past and fear does not overtake you about your future. Live well today so that, so that regret does not overtake you about your past and fear does not overtake you about your future. These thoughts will come, they're unavoidable. Can I say that again? These thoughts, they're gonna come they're unavoidable. They will come into your mind, no doubt. And when they do, find something fun to do. When complaining about the struggles in life come into your mind, find something fun to do. Find something God-fearing, God-centered, fun to do. This is not an opioid to try to escape from life. This is not a drug to hide from the tolls of life. This is an, an intentional engagement with a God-given spiritual restfulness that acknowledges life is hard, but hard things about life are not the only things about life. Go get you some business. Won't you, won't you, type, won't you type in the, in, in, in the chat? We type in the chat and say, go get you some business. Say, get you some business. Go play tennis. Go play some basketball. Go play golf. Go to the movies. Go play some music. And it doesn't have to be Jesus be real. Go play some cards. Go get you some business. Go get you some business. Go on a trip if you can. Go, go on a night out to a fancy restaurant if you can. Find your Fun. Tap in the chat, say, find your fun. Fun is an expression of your faith. Fun is a preview of the presence of God that we will all enjoy in an unending fellowship with the Father. With the Father. I, I don't know if you expect to go to heaven and been deep and spooky and all that, I'm not going to do all that. After all the hell I've been and gone down here, I'm not going to, after I've been lied on, talked about, criticized, mistreated down here, after paying bills, after going through surgeries and taking a prescription down here, after, re, after, after re, rising and falling and having hard days down here, I'm not going up to heaven with my legs crossed and my arms folded and my chin in my hand looking dignified. I'm going to have some fun. I'm going to walk. I'm going to skip. I'm going to leap. I'm going to run. I'm going to shout. But every now and then, when I get a chance, I jump, I shout, I leap, I run, I skip. I, I do it right now because this is what my daddy would say. Because when I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. I thank God for saving me. Hallelujah. 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 I'm going to have some fun right here. I'm going to learn how to have some fun. That's our lesson today. That's our own lesson. I want you to take some time 
to have self-care, I want you to learn to have some fun. But every now and then, when life seems like it's like it's pulling you down every now and then. I want you to stand up. I want you to give God some praise. I want you to have some fun. I want to skip. I want you to skip, leap, enjoy and rejoice right here, right here, right here, right here. I want you today. I want you to be intentional. I want you to learn to have some fun. Listen, we've been through this pandemic. And, and now things are opening up and we're getting back busy. We're getting to the hustle and bustle. Kids are going back to school and we're doing a lot of, we're in the business, business of life and we're doing a lot of things. I want you to have self-care. Reverend, Reverend Bradford always teaches us teaches that. She's, she's good at it. She teaches us about it. And it's, I want you to have some self-care and I want you to find your fun. Find your fun. Before, uh, before Pastor Kimbrough left, before he uh, went on break, we had a staff meeting. In the staff meeting, he said, y'all, August, I want you to take some time to yourself. I want you to take some time to, re to, to rest, relax. And he said, have some fun. Do some, something that you enjoy. And that's where we, we're going to end, end uh, this series we're going to end today. We're going to end today in our online worship. I'm telling you to have some fun. When everything is opening up, when, when you get real busy in life and you feel yourself about to complain, have some fun. Have some fun. Find something fun to do. Let's pray. Let's pray. But before we pray, if you don't know Jesus Christ as a Lord of your life, I want you to text this number. The number is going to be in your chat. I want you to text this number. We'll be gladly to, uh, someone will be gladly to reach out to you, and they'll be gladly to uh, go down the Romans Road with you and welcome you into the family of God. And even if in the chat you want to be a part of a ministry, uh, Mount Carmel is a great place, and we pray that you um, will, will join us and be a part of this uh, family church. Mount Carmel is a, I recommend Mount Carmel is a great place. Our pastor Kimbrough, our, our, our pastor, our lady Kimbrough and the entire uh, Mount Carmel church family, we would love for you to be a part of our church family. And also, I'll do, I do also want to say this before we get off online. I do want to say this, if you are looking for a live worship experience. The doors of the church are open. We want you to come. And we want you to come for that 8, 8 o'clock a.m. and our 1045 worship, worship experience. But I want you to do this. I want you to register online, mcbaptist.org. I want you to uh, register online and come to our live worship. Now, if you don't feel comfortable doing that, don't come. We're still going to have our online worship experience here online at 10 o'clock a.m. So with that being said, let's pray. Father God, we thank you, God, for our worship today. God, we pray right now that we find some fun. We find some fun. We're going to have some fun, and we're going to do it the right way. God, we, we, we know, God, when we have fun, God, it's, a, it's us, as, it's an outward expression of our faith to you. God, when we do it the right way. God, we love you. We honor you. And Father God, we pray right now, God, if no one... Uh, if anyone on here does not know you, God, we pray today that they will text that number. They will text uh, that number that's on our chat, and they will come to get to know you on today. Father God, we love you. We honor you. We worship your holy name. Father God, we pray right now in the name of Jesus, God, that you continue to bring healing to our land, continue to bring healing into our circumstances, God. We love you. We honor you. We worship you. And Father God, as we leave this online worship experience, God. We pray, God, that your presence does not leave us. We love you. We honor you. We worship your holy name. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Once you have a great week, once you have a blessed rest of the day, have a blessed week. We will see you on next week here at the same time at 10 a.m. here at Mount Carmel Baptist Church online worship experience. We love you. Much love. See you next week. Peace.